So, Jideoju, thank you for being with us on the program. Good morning, Nigerians. You know he's also a regular guest on our program. We equally have with us the Deputy Inspector General Operations of the Nigerian Police Force, Sotan Iwakama. Thank you so much for being with us. Good morning. Yeah, the stage is set for the rerun election. And as you all know, as we talk now, election is going on in River State. And that is why we have brought the INEC representative, police representative, and also political analyst to tell us more about situation reports that we will be anticipating from River State. So for the next 30 hours, we'll be here, though we intend to go for our news at 10 o'clock. Let me start with the director of voter education. What would you say the situation, what I need put on ground to ensure that we have a successful rerun in River State? Thank you very much. Um, the elections were slated as scheduled and uh, we had to postpone the last time because we hadn't gotten the judgments to know exactly uh, what constituencies and what, which polling units of those constituencies were to conduct the elections in. So once that was ascertained, we deployed the uh, materials to River State, uh, both sensitive and non-sensitive. The sensitive materials only got to River State on Wednesday deliberately because we did not want a situation where um, people would be exposed to these things. Uh, usually it's not because we take things straight from Abuja to, to the central bank vault, which exactly is what we did. Um, training, uh, retraining started on Monday and uh, went on through to Wednesday. And uh, of course we had done the recruitment and deployment and um, we trained extra um, five percent extra in case some of those who had been trained did not or do not show up on election day. Um, of course there have been hiccups and the security situation has been such that has kept us on our toes and we've kept on appraising and reappraising the situation whether the elections could still go uh, in the climate of fear that um, some people had expressed. Um, so we try to ensure Movements was done to the camps, uh, the camps where the materials and personnel will be kept overnight. So that first thing this morning, and my reports right from very uh, as early as 5 a.m., uh, the deployment to the polling units had commenced in just about every way I had spoken to people on the ground. So um, it is expected that uh, the people will almost all stations by now overnight some will have opened at this time and voting, accreditation and voting would have. Uh, comments and the re initial reports I'm getting is that in uh, most places I've spoken to that has been the case. And then let's move to security then. Police security in reverse with an election. My dear IG, what it really is on ground at the moment, what are we witnessing and what are we experiencing in River State? Well, I'm sure everybody knows the River State election is going to be highly contentious and extremely competitive to say the least. And um, the build up to the elections. Uh, by the political antagonists, if I might refer to them that way. Um, the rhetoric and all that has not been, um, in my view, very commendable. And it has, if you like, up to the ante. And as the last speaker did say, there's a lot of anxiety in River State. I just came back from there. I would have loved to have been there to supervise things, but I'm an indigenous of the state, and it would probably lay me over, um, open to a lot of accusations if I were there. So that's why I had to withdraw. But I went there to appraise the security situation and the preparedness of the police, um, as well as other agencies, because we're not doing it alone. We don't have you know, the strength to do it alone. We're doing it alongside other sister security agencies, such as the prisons, the immigration, the uh, civil defense, and so on. Um, in terms of the actual number and strength of personnel and resources in River State, I believe it's sufficient under a normal situation to handle uh, the elections. We have, and they are aware, that is the personnel, that this is a very dicey situation and sensitive. And we have um, conducted a risk analysis, which we update all the time. This risk analysis started way back in, you know, before the general elections in 2014, and we update it all the time. So we know the areas that are likely to uh, be volatile, areas that might not be uh, too volatile, and others that will be peaceful, as it were. And we have deployed accordingly. Our concern really is after the elections may have been, the results have been announced. Because usually from experience, that is when you start seeing uh, reactions. Some are celebratory, others are not so much so, and sometimes it uh, digresses, if you like, into volatility. So, so far, the reports we have received, 
INEC is dis distributing their materials, we're escorting them, election observers are there, um, and so far it's been uh, more or less peaceful. Uh, talking about uh, DSS official, yesterday there were a series of reports whether it uh, is alive or not. What truly is the situation on the DSS official? Well, um, I'm not going to speak on behalf of the DSS. Okay. I think everybody is aware that there was a t an attack on, I think, the Joint Task Force, okay. of which perhaps the DSS uh, officer was a member. Okay. I really don't know the exact detailed circumstances of that attack, except that there was an attack and he was injured. Whether he's alive or dead or not, I really don't know. Uh, let me now come to Kunle Fagbume, Executive Director, Center for Peace Building and Socioeconomic Development. River State election. You talked about it the last time you were here. Now we are here again for this election. What really have you experienced and what is the situation you are getting from your officials who are equally monitoring? It is unfortunate that we have the River State elections um, taking the kind of tone, nature, character and pattern that it has assumed. Very unfortunate because unnecessarily the stakes for this reverse rerun election has been heightened beyond that which is expected of any simple electoral contest. There has been an abuse of the political and legal processes which has indirectly affected the nature and pattern of partisan politics in rivers. The language for the campaigns have been unnecessarily caustic and hate speech and a little bit of incitement we can see clearly and when you do the risk assessment and analysis you begin to appreciate the fact that we are not surprised that even security and law enforcement agencies are under attack. It is unfortunate but I believe that we are getting to the level where we need to, again, review the legal framework for elections, which may mean that we will ask that should there be a violent incident within a particular constituency, all the candidates, all the political parties will have to be sanctioned in such a manner that they will truly lose, in such a manner that not a single of those candidates again will ever recontest for such a post in the next 10, 15 years. We need to be very affirmative on that. The other action that we need to bring to bear is the unfortunate contribution of the media. Because some of this reportage have made the airwaves Yes, the social media is giving the conventional media a run for the money. It is unfortunate that some of these things were not censored. Even if they were said on the open field, they needed to have been censored in such a manner that it should not affect us. We are open from the report from the electoral management body, from the security law enforcement entities, everything that needs to be done have been done. It is just for us to now begin to take note of how to move forward with the political class, the political elite must come up with a sense of national patriotic agenda that is focused on keeping the lives of human beings as sacrosanct. Gideo, do your take on the issues that have actually cropped up before the election and now that the election has actually commenced? Well, um, I endorse what my colleague um, on the panel has said. But in addition, we need to backtrack and look what, what's the historical uh, antecedents of all that is playing out in rivers. First and foremost, as I said in my column in Punch on Wednesday, uh, you need to understand the genesis of all these crises. It's, it's something that has moved and metamorphosed. Um, River State used to be a one-party state up until the advent of APC in 2013. That is where you have community voting, where people will just collect electoral materials, move into the river line, and bring it later and say, this is the candidate that has won. If you go look at the result sheet of previous elections up until 2015 general elections, it's usually landslide victory 
for the candidate of PDP vis-a-vis -vis others. It's, it's PDP and others. Today, the, the dynamics has changed. It's not PDP and APC. It's balance of power and balance of terror. And each of the two parties wants to prove their supremacy in the electoral landscape of River State. And the stakes are very high. The stakes are high because River is an oil-rich oil state with one of the highest um, uh, is this subvention they collect, 13% derivation, and then the monthly uh, subventions they collect. So APC would like to wrestle power from such an environment which can enrich their post because, as it's known, the party gets sponsored by its elected members. So the more persons they have in political offices, the more money comes to the party. And, of course, if you look at the six... six um, Political, the, the six uh, um, states in, in the South South geopolitical zone. It's only in Edo that APC is in firm control. And that is also up for grab later this year when there will be governorship election in that place. So the, the, the antecedent is such that now each of the uh, uh, political parties, APC and PDP, wants to, uh, wants to make a statement that they are, they are the one in charge. And while one is trying to consolidate, the other is trying to wrestle. And that war of attrition will definitely engender all manner of crisis. Don't also forget that we have not done well with prosecution of electoral offenders. And that is in itself is an, is, is an endorsement of, of, of electoral crimes. Because if the ROS are masterminds of previous uh, 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 infractions and rigging. We must also understand that something led us to this rerun. If the election had been peaceful, free, fair, credible, we won't be having almost a statewide rerun elections as it were. I've never, I'm a student of politics, I've never from history have a state where almost all the elective positions are up for grab in a rerun elections. Usually it's isolated, 3, 5, 10, 15. If you look at the 80 rerun that is taking place, rivers came first in the number of reruns that have to be held. So we need to understand all of this. But I want to say something about what my colleague, uh, 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 Mr. Fagbemi, is saying. That I, I don't support that uh, if wherever there is violence, every candidate there or every political party should be banned and what. What should be done is you isolate who are the perpetrators, the masterminds, the arrow aids, and then you disqualify them from contesting subsequent elections. That would send a right signal that, look, you need to behave yourself. But unfortunately, the law currently states that where there is violence, and at the end of the day, if there is no clear court winner, you still have to do a rerun. You understand? And that costs us a lot because we need to look at the political economy of how this affects the, the overall uh, uh, development of Nigeria. The resources that are being used for reruns could have been used for other developmental pr purposes. We can't continue this way. So there is need to, to amend the legal framework to ensure that whoever, whether at the tribunal level or at the level of independent investigation by the police and other security agencies, whoever, whichever candidate is found or political party is found to have sponsored violence should be disqualified from subsequent elections. And, and, and that, that will send the right signal and make the, sanitize the electoral process in a way. The other thing is that our political process is highly monetized. So much so that once you assume office, whatever you spend, whether on violence, recruitment, or talk, you can recoup within months. Okay, hold on, uh, uh, Mr. GD. Namdi is online from Port Accord at the moment in River State. Namdi. Namdi, can you please tell us what's the situation now? Namdi, can you please tell us what's the situation now in River State? Namdi. Namdi, you can... Tell us, what's the situation now?
Abuja, can, can, can you can you hear me back there? Can you hear me, Abuja? Yeah, I'm I'm hearing you. What's the situation there now in River State? What's the situation? Oh yes, Femi, indeed. Indeed, we we are on ground in, in Port Harcourt, that is the state capital. We have had the opportunity to drive around and notice a few things. Actually, it, it, we, we do know that INEC has designated or had designated 8 o'clock, 8 a.m. as the official time for the polls to open. We have been able to drive around and can confirm to you that in parts of Port Harcourt, where we have been to, we are, we are currently in Obiakpo, yeah, and we, we can confirm to you that polls are yet to open, yeah, in Obiakpo, where we've, where we've been in the last couple of minutes. And earlier on, like I said, we've had the opportunity to drive across across various parts of the state's capital here in Port Harcourt. And the situation appears to be the same. Here in Obiakpo, for instance, we, we were able to visit two distribution centers, INEC distribution centers, where sorting of electro, election materials were, were still ongoing. As at 8 a.m., it, it, it's well over, it's past one hour since the official time for the polls to open. And no, nothing has really, really changed here in Obiakpo. The distribution, certainly still ongoing in the two centers, distribution centers that we visited. And it, this is, in some ways, is, is delaying the opening of polls for, for this area. We, we've been able to speak with some of our reporters on the ground, too, in some parts of Port Harcourt, and nothing, it, it's more or less the same situation. But we also have reports coming in from other parts of the state, and we can confirm to you, especially from five local governments, that... Um, the polls have opened there, the materials have been distributed, and the polls have opened. These, these reports came from local governments like Thai local government, um, 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 o, Ogubulo, Ahoda, Hisht, Eleme, and Okrika. These are the five local governments. I'll, I'll quickly take that again. We do have reports coming in from Thai, from Ogubulo, Ahoda, Hisht. LMA and Okrika. These are the five local government areas where we got reports that the polls have opened as sensitive and non-sensitive materials have arrived, most polling stations in these local government areas. But for Port Harcourt, where we have been in the last couple of hours, in the last one hour or thereabout, we have driven around. We are, are currently in Obiakpo, where we can tell you that the polls are yet to open. In fact, as a matter of fact, we are, I am just standing a few meters away from one of the distribution centers that I referred to earlier, where I can tell you that no vehicle has actually driven out of here with any material. So that, that is the situation on Grand Fermi. We do hope that things would change around there and change quickly. Um, Enamdi, what were you able to get from the officials of uh, Independent National Electoral Commission as uh, the reason behind this development. Were you able to talk to any of the officials? What did they say is responsible? Namdi. Well, earlier on, Femi, I, I reached out to the... Well, Femi, go on, go on. earlier on, I reached out to the state resident electoral commi co commissioner. And I, we, I, it, yes... Yes, he didn't take my call, as a matter of fact. But when I got to the, when I got to one of the distribution centers, I was able to approach an official who said, "Well, we are sorting the materials, we're making progress," and that was at the first um, distribution center. Yeah, yeah, at the second distribution center that I came to. We, we, we did approach another official who, who confirmed that yes, they have been able to sort out the, the they have been able to sort out the materials for the senatorial polls and are currently sorting out the materials for the House of Representatives and State House of Assembly uh, elections. So what? But they do hope that they would be able to conclude with that soon and then move out to move out to the field where for, for the polls to open proper at the units. Okay, generally in terms of security. What do you have to say about what you have monitored in some of these centers that you have visited? Security. Well, in terms of security, I can tell you, Femi, and I tell you honestly that it's, it's, it's if you're, in terms of the presence of, of security personnel, it is massive. We have, had, we have had on our own as reporters with accreditation tags 
I, my cameraman, and of course other members of the crew, we've had challenges driving around, getting from pulling units to, to the other because we have had to stop all, at almost every junction, every major junction within Port Harcourt, the state's capital, where you have the presence of security men. It's, it's actually a joint operation. We, 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 we've been able to see the military, we've been able to see the police the, the, and other paramilitary agencies also on the ground. In fact, we did see a, a squad of custom of, uh, and personnel too, fully armed, I would tell you, in patrol vehicles all around the state's capital. It, it is impressive. It, it gives a sense of, of um, security. We, we do hope, actually, that it would also not deter the electorate or prospective voters from coming out. We hope it would, in some way, instill confidence in them to come out and participate in this process. So generally, what's the mood of the electorate in River State since you arrived yesterday? As expected, as expected, Femi, yes, yes, as expected, the people are quite excited. We all know how politically involved the people of um, River State are in, 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 in elections and this has been playing out since we, we got here yesterday. We were able to feel the pulse of the people. We did speak to different various tractor of the population. We, we spoke to the young, we spoke to the, that, that is the youth. We, we, did, we, we did speak to, to some first-time voters. We spoke to some middle-aged um, voters as well, and of course, the aged too. It, it, it's, all, it's, all, it's, it's all the same, cutting across the various tractors. The people are ex excited. The voters that have been looking forward to today, of course, today is here, and we're hoping that the excitement that has been building that has been building over the last couple of days would manifest today and we expect that we will see a massive turnout of electorate of people participating in the process. Thank you so much, um, Namdi. We will be looking forward to getting more reports from you in the course of the program. Thank you, Femi. That, that has been the situation, at least for now, from River State. But let me quickly who add that uh, at Alda East, local government distribution has actually ended from INEC to various wards and in Ward 7, distribution of materials from the various units is also in progress, as stated by NAMDI. In some other center party agents of APC and PDP say the distribution has actually been peaceful and so far also in Rivers West District. And at the headquarters of uh, Thai local government, materials are about to leave for the wards and the police, the army and other security agencies are indeed on ground. Let me start with DIG. With what we have heard now, what do you have to say? Well, first and foremost, this is a massive logistical uh, project. It's, there will always be some tweaks there. You know, it's not everything that will go according to plan. Um, in my profession, when you plan, you plan also uh, to have some sort of second option, just in case things go wrong. You know, the driver might turn up ill, the vehicle might break down, one thing or the other might happen. So uh, at the moment, given what um, your reporter has just said, uh, I would say we're reasonably satisfied. And um, I certainly hope that um, things go as smoothly as he has indicated in most of those areas. Uh, the areas where perhaps things haven't started, they'll pick up. Um, this is the normal thing. After uh, maybe 30 or so minutes, things will start moving and the voters will have the opportunity to vote. I did observe on the screen there uh, the patience of the electorate, which is a really good thing because Nigerians are not generally known for their patience, but uh, they seem quite patient there. And um, I'm sure they're ready to uh, you know, get through this little niggly period and then cast their votes. It's really a good thing, too, that INEC is now doing simultaneous uh, accreditation and voting so that people don't have to hang around too long unless they just want to listen to uh, the outcome of the, of the election there. Director of Voter Education, INEC, you've heard from them. In certain areas, it has started. In some, it has actually not. What do you have to say? Well, I... Um I watched the um, report and in the meantime I've tried to get in touch with my situation room in Abuja here and also on ground, specifically at uh, Obiakbo local government. That's a fairly urban uh, local government in, in the main. So um, all things ought to have been in accordance with uh, laid down plans. But as the DIG said, sometimes we lay down plans but things happen. I don't want to comment on something I don't know. So I want to get a, a factual report from those on ground. Why? 
it is such that uh, distribution is uh, still ongoing. But I'm aware that um, in most of the camps, they, uh, most of them went to camps overnight. So I don't know where, whether that, that's not our local government office in Obiakwa, so I don't know what, where he exactly is reporting from. I'll confirm that subsequently. So Kule Fagbemi, with this development, what does it portend or what are you anticipating? I can reassure Nigerians that obviously what may have occurred from past experiences in other uh, elections, it's not impossible that some stakeholders may have raised some objections which the electoral management body as a proactive entity is trying to address. And that is why we can see how calm the people are over there. One thing that was said by the reporter was a massive security law enforcement presence deployed for this election. The United Nations ratio for policing is one to 400 citizens. And for some of us, in the last couple of years, we've been asking the question, how come, when it comes to election, the ratio deployed to the voters or the probable voters, registered voters, for rivers, if I'm not mistaken, we are operating at about a ratio of one security operative to about 100, 125 registered voters, which in itself is putting a premium on the security and law enforcement system. And it is high time the political class begins to understand that this is an expensive call on the security of the Nigerian state. That when we have elections, we have to drain this much. I'm looking forward to a study being done later on to find out what were the nature, character, and manner of security breaches that occurred in other climes, in other states of the Federation, where they drew men and brought to a state where we are holding an election. Because we need to really help all of us to understand that we must begin to speak to ourselves and stop this painful recourse to violence when it comes to elections. I plead with Nigerians to understand that for us to have development, our electoral cycles must be smooth and we should understand that there are alternate dispute resolution mechanisms available to us. The fact that we are having to have a wholesale rerun in River State in itself is uncalled for. Because if we add the opportunity from what we are reflecting upon now in terms of all the elections that have been either nullified, a rerun called for, should citizen Jonathan, good luck, Ebele Jonathan, had decided to say I was contesting the results of that election. It implies that we may have been having a much more cantankerous situation to deal with. And political actors need to understand that it is just an opportunity to serve Nigerians. And if they do not win, they should not overstress the, 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 the Nigerian state. So many lives are being lost. Operatives who were being moved, some of your men that were traveling had an accident. These are things that we need to understand or call when we're having some electoral management officials to have challenges. Yes, the insurance may take care of it, but we need to begin to look at the human cost element that we are dealing with when we keep on having these cycles of rerun elections. Uh, Jideojo, you had uh, Namjo Deku, and I equally told you about some other developments that are actually cropping up in River State. What does this portend? It's very though we, though it, has, it has just actually started. It, it, it's unfortunate that um, this nagging, recurring decimal of uh, uh, logistics uh, has always plagued INEC. And I do not know when the commission is going to get out of it. Because if we are having rerun, yes, good enough we are not having governorship election in Rivers. It will have been much, the stakes will have been much higher, oh, as we saw in Bayelsa uh, and Kogi. Uh, the good thing is that this, this uh, 
purely elective uh, legislative offices. So the determination of a winner is just by simple majority. So even if it's one million voters that are on the register, if it's 500,000 that comes, the simple majority wins the election. You don't need to satisfy the 25% uh, of uh, two-thirds two in, in, the, in the local governments as it were. But I, I think uh, INEC itself needs to sustain, uh, to conduct maybe the Electoral Institute of the Commission. Why is this persistent logistic challenge facing INEC? I know for a fact, I work with the Commission, I mean, at, uh, not as a staff, but I do know that they have put in place Elections Operations Support Center, EOSC, that kind of follow through. Because if, if the materials had got into uh, rivers as at Wednesday, deployment has been done as at Thursday, there is a uh, registration area center, RAC, from, which is what, equivalent of what, what they mean by RAC is the world level. The materials gets to the world level. From world level to polling units level, it's not a long distance. Why then should we have this nagging problem of, this is almost 10 a.m., elections here to commence. And we shouldn't be mindful of the fact that now, already the states, because of the heightened tension, there will likely be uh, a, a, a very minimal turnout, low turnout of voters. Now, for those who are excited, who wants to participate, who feels that they have other business to do today, and let me quickly go and cast my vote and go to where other and, and do my other errands. Now, two hours behind schedule, they, they definitely might not have that patience to come back and, uh, and cast that. So maybe there is a need for a study. With all the uh, deployment of materials to rack level, the follow through with, uh, with electoral operations support center that makes calls to see how the deployment is moving and where there are issues and quick, um, uh, quick response mechanism put in place. We shouldn't be having, even if at, I just came back from Uganda, uh, where I went to observe the uh, February 18 uh, presidential and, and parliamentary elections in Uganda. Elections in Uganda starts from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. It used to be 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Now, this is 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And already two hours or thereabout has been eaten into. Out of the, the reports that your, your correspondent gave, said only five. They have been able to confirm that only five local government out of 23 have started on time. Which then means that unless that it has not been able to get confirmation from the others, if, if we take it in absolute terms, five out of 23 is not really a pass mark. In terms of early commencement of work. I think the director will want to respond I'm to some of this. Speaking the way he's speaking, we don't even have a report yet, and you're <laughs> commenting and doing an assessment without having all the facts yet. You don't do yeah. that. Okay, so what, what do you have to say, particularly about this development that has actually happened? Yes. Some are actually not pleased that uh, in some of the centers they have not actually started. We're not pleased, not at all pleased, but I have to find out the reasons why this is the case. I was in this studio in Bayelsa and our people were locked in into a local government office. We could not deploy, for example. And at the time we started the program, I didn't know the reasons. So later on, we came to find out the reasons. So we have to first of all ascertain how many local governments this is happening, how many centers, how many polling units are affected. And until we do that, until we have the facts, we should be very circumspect about commenting on and assessing and giving pass marks or fill, fill marks. Let us hear first. Okay, let, uh, let me ask from uh, DIG Sotoy. Now that we are doing simultaneous voting and also accreditation, what do you feel this will portend in view of the experience we have had in f previous elections for the nation in particular? Well, from a security perspective, and that's the only perspective from which I want to address the issue, I think it's uh, personal, I think it's a lot better. It saves a lot more time. Um, people tend to get a bit agitated when they have registered and then they now have to wait another hour or two before they begin to vote. And, uh, you know, a lot of things, they get hydrated, agitated, you know, arguments or discussions which delve into arguments or uh, occasion between supporters of different parties and things like that. And so I think it's, um, 
And even the policemen indeed, yeah, they, they, they're there from what, six, seven in the morning till whenever the voting is going to end. And that's a long period to stand around, um, you know, feeling a little bit nervous and anxious and hoping that things go the right way. So I think it's, it really is a good thing that uh, INEC has brought on board and I hope it continues into all other elections. <coughs> Let me further state, um, talk about something uh, my friend here said. He said the United Nations ratio of police to uh, the civil population is 1 to 400. And we have about 315,000 police officers in a country of estimated at 170 million. And if you do the mathematics, even if you do it wrongly, it's at least 1 to 550,000. So um, I think we should bear that in mind when we're talking about crime in this country generally and elections, and particularly when it gets to states like River State where things are highly contentious and competitive, to use polite words, then you would understand why there's a need uh, for this overbearing dominance, if, if you like, of security agencies and bringing them in from outside and the risk that is associated with that. But I fully agree with you. It's about time the political class took a hard look at what they're doing. And um, I also agree, just like in FIFA, anybody who has been found wanting, they should be kicked out. Uh, political party-wise, if a, a person or a party is seen to have sponsored, even an individual in that party seems to have sponsored uh, violence, there's no reason why that candidate should be allowed to continue. I don't, I mean, that's just my subjective opinion, and I think I have a right to state it. Only if I agree me. Yeah, I'm happy that I can have um, the protection of informed discourse by DIG operations to appreciate what I actually put on the table. For some of us, what we're interested in having is that governance service delivery is a focus when you say, I am interested in contesting. And if the people are at the center and the core of your quest and agenda, you want to bring them to the level where we can truly and genuinely provide services that will lift them up and empower them. What we are having, oh, you, we're having a call? Go on. Go on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what we are having that is unfolding in rivers from my experience, and I'm happy that uh, we can talk about the ECOPs that we are having. Many times you'll be shocked the way political class stakeholders react and do not allow materials to move out because somebody raises an objection. If an objection is raised, it is always safer to try to address it, address it there. And once it is fully addressed, they move out with the materials. More so that what the electoral management body, GDA, all of us work with the electoral management body, and we do understand this. The materials are polling unit specific. They are rack specific, that means, and local government specific. So if somebody brings up a complaint saying that I'm not sure that this is not being done, more so that there are allegations that are even making the social media tweets. Because I'm following that some people are trying to carry fake materials around and they are trying to ensure that you do not allow any escalation. Then we should leave it at that for now and do the confidence building that we need to allow Nigerians to understand that things will work with the election in rivers. That said, we need to equally understand that Nigerians are not really the challenge, but the political class that are creating this. And I think we need to start addressing the political class. A legal framework that must be reworked in such a manner that for subsequent elections must start off with sanctions that will ensure that should there be any tension unnecessarily, and if you go to the tribunal unjustly, part of the sanctions is not just for you to pay um, a token amount in the law courts. It should equally be tied to the probability of your future contest. That way we'll bring some level of sanity into the scheme of things. Finally, you'll discover that the electoral management body succeeded in brokering 
a memorandum of understanding with the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers, which to a large extent has solved some of the logistics and purchase of vehicles and the release of vehicles by critical stakeholders to support the operation. So we are on safe grounds. I do hope that things will continue to improve. Okay, hold on, uh, Mr. Kunle. We are getting a report from Kingsley too. Kingsley, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Kingsley, good morning. Good morning, sir. I can uh, hear you, sir. Uh, that's actually Kingsley Amajiri from Port Harcourt. What's the situation report where you are actually covering? are gathered. We have visited about four rack centers. That is where they distribute the material. The materials are still at the rack center. The, there's nothing uh, happening for now. The uh, voters are out there, but the materials are not at the pooling units. They are yet to be distributed from the rack center. People are that this is something else. We went to the mother primary school of Lanada, one of the rack centers in the local government area. Uh, the at work staff, they are gathered, they are, they, are, they are sorting the materials out. We left there and went to Model Primary School of uh, Agudama, that is in the Kota Kondoko government area, as well as St. Andrews uh, State Primary School, which is also a rack center. It is the same issue. Uh, as at 9 a.m., that was when we were there. We left there and we drove down to Ikoyo Doko government. Right as I speak with you, we are at uh, Model Primary School, Omawa, that is in Ikoyo Doko government area, the same situation. The people are just gathered there. Uh, people are idling around by the side of the school, but for the security is on ground. Uh, the adults and they are all at the rack center. Okay, what about the people? What about the electorates? Those who are actually expected to participate in this election. What's their mood like? What are they saying? And did you get any message from the electoral officials? Oh, thank you so much, uh, Kingsley Amajiri from Port Harcourt in River State. That has been Kingsley Amajiri, uh, Director of Voter Education and Publicity. Same report coming from Kingsley after what we heard from Namdi. Yes. What do you really have to say now? Well, I have um, preliminary reports in the sense that um, the Situation Room has sent messages down to the officers on ground to ascertain exactly what is going on. Okay. And um, Obia, well, for example, I think they've said issues of uh, things were moved from the local government office of the, of the commission to the racks as agreed upon. But um, in some instances, I think the, the, the disputes between the agents of various political parties and they're complaining about distribution of materials and some people insisting on wanting to see everything and how things are going. So that dispute is, has delayed in Obiakpo. But I will get further facts maybe during the break when I uh, get to the situation and get to put our cut itself by phone. Um, Mr. GD. Well, uh, again, I'm not surprised this is happening in Obiak, but I think that's the home local government of the governor. Yes. And uh, all eyes will be there. And, uh, and, and something that I found worrisome, uh, and this is not peculiar to Nigeria, because I also, Obiakwa is more like in the city center, just like next door neighbor to Potakot, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it also happened in Uganda, where election started very well into the afternoon on February 18 in Kampala, which is the state capital. And, and people like, I was in Masaka, which is like uh, about two hours drive from Kampala, and the election started as at when due. Uh, by 7, 7.30, the entire process has started. But in Kampala, which is the, the, the capital of Uganda, election did not start until about midday. So you, then the argument was, oh, um, they have to deal with the far distances first. And then uh, because they feel that the city centers, we are the, that they can deal with that later. But that is where the media will focus. Whether we like it or not, now, nobody is even telling us anything from the Riverine area. 
whether things are on or off. Because Umbiakpo is in the city center, it's on, the, it's on dry land. Uh, we, we need to hear from what is happening in those river line areas, two, three, four, five hours on the ISIS. Are we having it smooth in those places? Are there complaints? We, we will appreciate that. But it's not so much that I, I quite understand uh, where the director of uh, publicity is talking about uh, that I need to appreciate the fact that I am not ignorant of the fact that INEC itself alone by itself cannot guarantee peaceful elections. We know in the last general elections there were issues with the uh, citing of resource sheets when former Governor Ruti Miyamichi said he needs to see the resource sheets before he will allow the process to go on. Possibly something like that. So I, I quite agree that the political class are actually the major culprits in all of this. Because if you don't satisfy them, already there are arguments, counter and counter arguments, that um, uh, INEC has, has uh, filled up the ad hoc staff list with partisan people, uh, so much so that even in uh, the University of Patakot, where many of the returning officers were, were shopped for, uh, declined that they were not going to be part of the process because of the allegations against them that they were going to work for APC. And uh, the people are talking of fake military uniform, fake army uniform being distributed, uh, money being ex exchanged, and 50,000 is alleged to have been given to some people to, 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 to get them to do some dirty jobs. So we know that unless there is a very strong punitive measure taking against the political elite who foments and perpetrate most of these atrocities that have cost us so much, not only in terms of funds, but also in terms of image. Because whatever is happening, even in, 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 in a state, has global attention. The world is tuning. Rivers in diasporas are monitoring what is going on. They are telling their friends. And it's, it's, it's not sounding good when things cannot run smoothly. And so I do hope that we will put again stringent measures against perpetrators of violence, so much so that when they pay high cost for it, it's, it becomes a disincentive. Nobody wants to, 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 to make investment in violence again. Um, Mr. Kunle, what would you have to say now? Now that we have seen all this development, what can we really do to step up our electoral system? Um, I think, and I'm happy that um, my brother Uzi is here. We will need to do a back-to-back off-season, off-electoral season, voter education, political education, civic education, and sustain it with the contributions of agencies like the National Orientation Agency. I think it is high time that the curriculum of primary, secondary, and tertiary education must begin to address democratic electoral processes. We must have a full-fledged course for security law enforcement entities to understand their role. We must have the same done in the Institute of Journalism for journalists and those who play that role as well in terms of reportage. We need to improve on the level of enlightenment so that we can do the correct thing subsequently. Here we're talking about back-to-back -back political education. We're equally looking at what we can do to improve our electoral system. This is a special program, as I told you earlier on, on the River State rerun elections where we have senatorial elections going on federal constituency election, and also constituencies in the state House of Assembly. Although there are so many developments, but we are going on a break now to enable us to take Usman Damfordia University convocation in Sokoto State. On Friday, the 29th of October 1943, to the royal family of Olobun Kute. His late father was Prince Tijani Babajide Akio, a descendant of Olobun Adam, Onitana, and Aromiri white cap chiefs, who are the land owning chiefs of Lagos State. Oba, the Oba of Lagos, Oba Rilwan Babatunde, started his educational pursuits 
At Savo Memorial Primary School in yeah. Ibadan, and Ansaru Dean Alakoro in Lagos. He had his secondary education at Ansaru Dean Grammar School, Soro Lere, Lagos. Obadi Luan worked as tax clerk in the Lagos. Good morning, State Nigerians. This is the 32nd, 33rd, and 34th the combined convocation the ceremony of the Osman Danfodio University Sector reaching you live from the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, holding today, the 19th of March, 2016. The combined convocation... Executive Director, Center for Peace, Building, and Socioeconomic Resource Development, and GDOJU, Executive Director, OJA Development Consult. Let me start with INEC. What's the situation so far, the report you have gathered, at least in the last five hours that this election has started? Thank you. Um, there have there are various reports, uh, varied reports also, of uh, the elections proper. The regrettably, the elections have not gone on uh, as scheduled in some places. It didn't start as early as we wanted to. There were issues, not so much of logistics, but issues concerning acceptance of some of the forms, some of the uh, materials that were specifically result sheets. Um, the parties competing parties have um, raised a lot of dust as to the authenticity of the result sheets, notwithstanding the fact that the recent electoral commissioner signed some of these results sheets and authenticated them, but there were issues whether they should be allowed to, uh, they should be used, and issues whether these are fake result sheets, and uh, concerns whether mm. results have been written on other sheets to be produced at a relevant time, and the disputes about materials. So that prevented us from moving in some areas. So regrettably, in some uh, specific locations, it hasn't gone as well as we had wanted to. But in most other locations, things have gone according to plan and as planned. We'll be talking more about our result sheet issue, but DIG operations, what's the situation from your end, security-wise? Well, generally speaking, um, the situation has been fair. That is not to say there haven't been some incidents uh, here and there. Um, there has been a little uh, tension, if you like, uh, in some areas, uh, the Andoni area, area Boni, uh, Bori area, where, as uh, the INEC representative has said, uh, the result sheets have not been accepted. But um, that is not so much a security issue as an INEC issue, but it can build up into a security issue. Uh, so, so far, things seem to be a, a lot better than uh, perhaps one would have thought initially. Any arrests so far? Uh, not that I've been made aware of, no. Uh, you have some men monitoring for you there. What really have you actually gathered? Well, um, I, uh, as it were, um, the, the process is on. As you know, election is not an event, it's a process. But my worry is more about the political elites, the political class. Uh, many a time, we unfairly criticize the Electoral Commission. We tend to forget that no matter the level of INEX preparation, if the political elite are not helping the process, there can never be credible, violent, free elections. Many of the incidents that have been brought to our attention here have shown that the challenge is more with the political class in River State, particularly the PDP and APC agents. Uh, there have been uh, instances of even shooting at INEX staff and you know, dislodging the security agents, cutting away materials, burning uh, vehicles, uh, commuting election materials and personnel. That is not good enough. And, and I think we need to get up. I've earlier advocated stringent punitive measures need to be put in place if you are going to sanitize Nigeria's electoral process. The ROS and the masterminds of this, uh, those who try to disrupt the electoral process need to be brought to book. I'm glad that the, the president spoke in the early, earlier this week about his conviction and his intention to deal ruthlessly with those who perpetrate electoral violence and fraud. We need him to back that up with serious actions. 
Because we can't continue to waste human and material resources all in the process of conducting a civil exercise like elections. We do know that the stakes are high. We do know that our electoral process is highly monetized. We do know that people felt they can always get away with perpetration of electoral crimes. Because yes, police may have made arrest. How many of them are successfully prosecuted at the end of the day? And I also appreciate the challenge that INEC itself has. You will realize that over the years, INEC has said, set up electoral offenses commission because the commission is not well resourced at this point in time to undertake a massive prosecution of electoral offenders, given the shortage of manpower and financial resources that is at its disposal. That is why it's advocating, at least one thing it, uh, the commission has considered to, is the need for that power, which is not even total, because the, what, the section 153 or thereabout of the Electoral Act talks about INEC being the prosecutor of those who are apprehended by, by the security agencies uh, for electoral offenses. But INEC does not have power to make arrest, does not have power to investigate. It, uh, it can only do any successful prosecution in line with the police, a, 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 a in collaboration with the police. And many a time, the police itself, many of, we, have, we have been told that 6,000 of the personnel that are deployed for security in River State are mobilized from outside of rivers. So even if any one of them apprehends somebody who committed electoral crime, he will have, the IPO will have left after the elections to his primary area of deployment, which may be outside of rivers. Then it becomes an issue getting him to uh, successfully, diligently Perfect. investigate the, the matter so as to pass on to INEC. These are the challenges that we, uh, when, when my brother on the, on the panel, Ayokunle uh, Fagbemi, talked about the need to amend the electoral law to deal with some of this lacuna that we will continue to have people apprehended for electoral offenses, but many a time never get successfully prosecuted. It needs to be dealt with. Uh, the report from uh, River State indicated that there is serious fighting at Rumu Domaya Ward 4, Unit 8, in Obiakwa local government area. In fact, a man was stabbed. Kunle Fagimi. Um, I can only take advantage of uh, this last report to again appeal to the citizens and the good people of River State to understand that there is a need for us to conduct ourselves in civil manner until the end of the exercise. The way and manner those of them who have come out quietly to exercise their civic obligations have done is commendable. They should not allow themselves in the face of any provocation to go on to the streets on the rampage and they should not allow themselves to become canon fodders. They should be mindful of the fact that even though there are challenges about prosecuting, uh, like Jide was trying to draw attention to, the strong arm of the law is there to do justice at the end of the day because there's already a paradigm shift. And people must understand that the political elite that may be sponsoring them are not putting their own children and their own words on the streets. So they must avoid becoming the foot soldiers for this. And in cases where lives are lost, those people end up not coming back again. When you look at some of the reports that we've discovered so far, you will realize that it is the political elites that are unnecessarily overeating the system. Stakeholders' consultations were held either at the electoral management body level INEC or the one with the security and law enforcement system. And how to resolve issues was clearly highlighted during that period. But unfortunately, what we are having today, the things that are becoming contentious are not necessarily supposed to have become contentious to the extent that they are delaying and disrupting the smooth running 
of the electoral process, particularly in allowing materials to move to the polling units from the racks. Mindful that they had agents that were with them at the state capital level when they received materials, sensitive materials, and they moved them to the local government and the local government to racks. Why should it now be at the point of moving from racks to the polling units that things have become cont uh, contentious? We need to appeal to the political class to kindly disinhibit themselves from continuing in that line of thought. The other thing that we need to plead with them to do is to understand that this is just an election which is supposed to be a rerun and that they will not be doing the good people of River State and Nigeria any good if they unnecessarily overeat the political atmosphere of the Nigerian state. Uh, let me just also say that uh, at the moment, we have reports that voting has actually started uh, in some places in the local government area, though with low turnout. Few cases of smart card reader failure, military on the main roads with other security personnel at the polling units. But for Elele, where some youths on the streets were wielding weapons, it's been a peaceful atmosphere so far. Equally too, Governor Jensen Wiki and his wife have cast their votes in their ward in Obia for local government area. The governor expressed satisfaction with the turnout of voters, but frowned at what he described as a preparation of INEC. A preparation of INEC, would you agree with what Governor Yesom is saying? Taking into consideration the fact that you <coughs> talk about pre training and some other things that you actually put in place. Well, I don't have the particulars of ill preparation that the governor yeah. has referred to, but what I do know is that uh, all necessary preparations had been made and put in place. Uh, if people uh, stop us or prevent, uh, prevent us, prevent the commission from undertaking its statutory responsibility, there isn't much I can say uh, about that. All I can say is it's regrettable. I can use stronger words when I'm on air, so I'll say it's regrettable. But uh, to, say, to say that the uh, commission is, was ill-prepared, I don't think will be accurate. What we have seen in some places is that the commission has been prevented from undertaking the assignment. It's be a contentious issue when we know that or what you need to do in an election of this nature is just to come vote and at the end of the day they count the results and the results are announced they are your questions well before i answer that impossible question because i think it's meant for him <laughs> <laughs> let me let me um, uh, address an issue uh, gd raised here regarding prosecution and um, some arrests that were made um, it was true, it, um, I forgot about this, that in the early hours of this morning, yeah. uh, there was a gentleman who was arrested with um, prepared re uh, results sheets <laughs> and um, taken to the state CID for, in, I mean, for further investigation. Um, it doesn't really matter who arrested him. By the time they go for their statements, the policeman will state exactly what happened, will have his particulars and know where he serves. And when the time comes, of course, he will be brought down to uh, the venue of offence, which in this case is River State. And uh, INEC also always leads in the prosecutions of these uh, cases. So it's a kind of synergy between the police and INEC. And um, they, they almost have uh, one of their staff embedded with us uh, to go through the processes of investigation and to ensure that prosecution is, um, will be successful. So, okay. so uh, I, I like a representative, why is result sheet usually generating a lot of attention, attraction, when an election of this nature is, is taking place? Well, uh, it's directed at me, but I, I, I don't know. The, uh, it probably, uh, is the question is probably better directed at those who don't have that, uh, who have made it an issue because we print result sheets and there are very, very few people who are privileged to see the result sheets before uh, they are brought out of the central bank. And when they are brought out, they're not even opened until they get to the office and the sorting starts in accordance with where the materials are, which local government, which polling is there to be distributed to. And we do this in the presence of security forces. We do it in the presence of accredited party agents and accredited observers who are all entitled and encouraged to be there. So, uh, Director, let me pause you a little. We have uh, Namdi is already with us now. Namdi is standing by in Port Harcourt. Namdi, are you ready? What's the situation report that you have for us now in wherever you are now in River State?
last time we spoke to you in Abuja there, well, we can confirm to you that voting had long started in all across Port Harcourt, the River State's capital. Uh, unlike the last time when we came to you and we, we talked about the delay in the opening of the polls. Well, a couple of hours after then, things actually took off in NS and then we saw lots of pulling units all across um, Port Harcourt, the River State's capital, opening up for the electorate to come participate in the process. But of course, you cannot take away the fact that, that there were there, there were some some, some sort of delay on the part of INEC in, in arriving at most of these pulling units in Port Harcourt, um, the, the state capital. But we did tell you at the time, of course, that materials had, had in, in other parts of the state, in some local government areas, at the time we mentioned five of these local government areas where election took, where the polls opened quite um, on time. Uh, well, we do know that elections is progressive in these areas that were mentioned at the time. And then, of course, some other local government areas too had since commenced with the voting. It is significant to point out th that voting, accreditation and voting is actually taking place at the same time. This was something that was, was replicated that we saw play out in, during the Bayasa rerun election. We, we were there and then we brought that to you too. Well, that is the same thing playing out here today. We, we see the electorate prospective voters go to their polling unit, they get accredited and of course they commence with the voting thereafter almost immediately, just about the same time. Well, we, we have walked around and yes, the delay has happened, but then voters at the polling unit, they are participating in the process. I think it is also quite significant to point out here that we are about an hour to the official time that INEC expect for polling units to 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 close to end voting. Well, how that factors in or rather incidents involving the card readers, a couple of electors have had to complain, but then we also do know that they are giving out, INEC ad hoc officials are giving out incident forms for, for these, for affected electors to, to fill. Well, I, I, we, we talked about a couple of issues earlier on, and I said we will be coming up back to some of these issues. Well, I have with me a public affairs analyst, he is a barrister, he is also involved in civil movement and he has been quite active today. For the greater part of today, he has been monitoring the exercise as it were. Uh, Barrister, earlier on while I was speaking to, to Abuja, yeah. I, I, I mentioned the fact that we, we did witness some sort of delay earlier today. Uh, um, we also do know that INEC has picked 2 o'clock as the official time for, for voting. To, to end in most of the polling stations, in fact, in all of the polling stations. Does the fact, does the fact that we experience some sort of delay not factor in the entire, in the entire equation, equation? Of course it will, uh, but these uh, directives are contained in the manual of officials. Uh, this is the official time, but uh, uh, putting into consideration that uh, polling started quite late in some places, I think it behoves on the INEC officials, officials in the polling units. They don't have to wait for any directive from anywhere to understand the, the, the time time has to be extended in such places. Um, it is very, very important because what is, what, is, what is key is to ensure that people exercise their franchise. As more people, as more as they are in the voters' register come out to vote, which is very, very important. The credibility of the process, the transparency of the process, the, 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 everything surrounding the sacredness of the electoral, electoral process is anchored on the fact of how many people came out to vote. The more, the merrier. The more, the better. <laughs> Security has been an integral component in, in this entire process. We, we've had, we've had, currently, we've been getting reports from some parts, reports, unconfirmed reports, I, I dare say, of, of some incidents in, taking place in outside, not, not in Port Harcourt per se, but out, 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 on the outskirts of, of, this, of the capital city. How significant how significant has this affected the process? I, I do know that you've also been monitoring the situation. 
Yes, uh, there, there's been reports, but a majority of those reports are unconfirmed, though. Um, even if they are confirmed, I think they make up an infinity of my proportion of uh, the conduct of the election. So far, from what we've seen so far, and reports we've garnered from um, most of the polling units, even outside Port Harcourt, there's been voting, there's been credibility, there's been authenticity. Um, I know those areas, there's the, the, so, somebody talked about boots, um, vote uh, snatching, uh, material snatching somewhere in Opobo, in Abalama, there was they said somebody was, um, uh, there was no electoral materials and what have you. It behooves on INEC to know what to do in that circumstance. What is important is to ensure that people are not disenfranchised, that people who have their voters' card, their PVC, and they are willing and ready to vote should be allowed, should be given that franchise to exercise their civic responsibility. We had such discrepancies or call. I think INEC will stand up to it, to, to their responsibility to ensure that people are not unduly disenfranchised by doing the appropriate thing. Thank you so much, Barista. It's, that's been quite enlightening. Well, well, family, that's, that's about it from here right now. We do hope that in the coming minutes or just before uh, 2 o'clock, INEC would come out with a strong statement or with a statement to determine what happened, especially in areas where we know that voting commenced um, quite late. Femi. But hold on, uh, before you go, uh, talking about movement, what, what do you really observe in terms of movement around? Is it restricted? Or what were your observations so far? Well, well, of course, that, that's to be expected. We do know that during elections, movements are usually restricted. Well, that's, that has played out here today. In the state's capital where, where we have been in the last couple of hours, of course, the, 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 the movements are restricted. But electorates actually do have the right to walk to their polling units. It's usually close to your place of domicile, your place of residence. Uh, that's why INEC po positions polling units close to the homes of, um, of prospective voters. Well, we do know that the voters are walking from their homes to the polling units. But on the, ma the major highways, are, uh, I will just ask the camera to pan a bit to my left. That should give you an idea, a picture of how how the roads are really the, the, this this is um, this is usually a very busy route for d during working hours and during the working days I, even the weekends uh, this road is usually packed with vehicular movements and of course uh, people also going about their their normal businesses but today you can see how it looks you hardly we've been here for quite some time now and i can tell you that that the vehicles, it, it, we've, we've seen hardly one vehicle come, we've, ad, we've seen hardly one vehicle drive by. So that's, that's about it, Femi. It's been, it's, I think the restriction order is in place and it's been respected by, by the people. On a last note now, uh, Namdi, the turnout, women for this exercise, what was it like? Well, Femi, it's, um, I, I, I would not authoritatively tell you that it's been impressive because I do not have the total number of accredited voters in some of these polling units. I would have been able to confidently tell you if it is impressive or not if I, for instance, have the total number of accredited voters there and I do also have the total number of persons who have cast their vote here today. I, I think the outcome, the difference would have determined whether or not the turnout is impressive. But we have been able to see quite a number of, of women uh, turning out, coming out to participate in the process. Like, like I said when we spoke earlier, we've, we've seen quite a number. Th th it's, this, is a, this is a state of politically conscious, involved people quite politically active and then I mean it plays out everywhere you go you, you see people coming out quite excited about the process willing to be part of the process in fact waiting to be part of the process for me that has been playing out and that hasn't changed either thank you so much Namdi looking forward to getting more reports from you from River State Porter Court uh, that's actually Namdi Odipo from Port Harcourt in River State, giving us an appraisal of the situation on the River Street on election day. We've heard a lot, gentlemen, about the situation. But I want to put this to 
INEC uh, chairman's representative. What will now happen in places where we have issues at the earlier stage, moreover, when we have two o'clock as, as our deadline? Okay. First of all, let me reassure everybody that, uh, especially the Rivers voters, that anybody who is on queue at 2 p.m. will be accredited and be allowed to vote. Nobody will be disenfranchised, that's, that, that's for sure. Um, but <coughs> as to whether we will extend that 2 p.m. deadline, it will now depend on those on the ground, and each case will be taken on its own merits. If there has been a delay of several hours in the commencement, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, then we may decide, the electoral officer, with uh, the permission of the REC and return officer, may decide that, look, there's need for us to extend it. But even if there are 2,000 people on queue at 2 p.m. in any particular plane, they will be allowed to cast their votes. Kole, yeah, any think, further uh, development? Yeah, or? I think what we need to assure Nigerians revolves around the fact that the framework allows for constant appraisal of what is ongoing. And that is why you'll discover that for the rerun in River State, you have a national commissioner and some other regs countermanding operations at the senatorial level. So decisions are being taken. And at Abuja Air, you have the chairman and other commissioners equally in the office so if there is a need for back and forth and we've already seen that in terms of the policing and security arrangements as well the most important thing that we need to bring to bear is to kindly alert and encourage our political class particularly the political parties on the need to improve their election day reporting system that is devoid of sensationalism, that is devoid of an attempt to overreach themselves and create an impression that things are bad or terrible, whereas they truly not are in that negative perspective. And before you continue, let me give some updates as we have from Okrika. The conduct witnessed a massive turnout of voters, in other words, visited by our correspondent. He says that the voters took their turn to cast their votes. There were no military presence in the community, unless in some in the outskirts of Okrika. However, the police has less business of controlling voters as they, it was peaceful and orderly, although electoral officers arrived a bit late to some of the polling units. Election, however, is yet to start in Gokana local government area due to alleged distribution of fake materials. There is no election in Ogoni for now until INEC. They say authenticate the materials. And lastly, from Abwa in Odua local government area, materials arrived at about 9 o'clock this morning. Accreditation and voting started on time and is still going on peacefully. So the election day reporting system of the political parties through their agents, we need to improve on it. Because you'll discover that these party agents and officials were there when the sensitive materials were retrieved from the safe warehousing. They needed to have transmitted the data to the next level and then the next level to the next level. If all these and the information shared with them at the level of the stakeholders' consultation had been properly disseminated and without bias, what we are calling fake today will not actually arise because it is clear that some people are toying with sensitive issues to call it fake in such a manner that can easily escalate the tension that had already been heightened in that particular state. We plead with political actors, we plead with members of the two major political parties in alphabetic order, APC and PDP in particular, to kindly activate a mechanism that can speak to their membership to understand that these same issues were discussed with them at the level of the consultations, be it the one that was just INEC and the political actors or the security law enforcement entities and them, so that we do not unnecessarily cause Chaos, we do not heighten tension to the extent that lives and properties are lost and destroyed. The IG operations, most of this development that we are seeing as a result of this result sheet and preparing result could heighten security issues. What, what, what's your take on this, sir? 
Well, first of all, I'm very pleased to hear that uh, my hometown, Okrika, things are going smoothly. <laughs> it tends to show you that we're very disciplined people, so that, that's really good. Um, with regards to the heightened tension, it's, it, 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 it's quite unfortunate. But these are things that uh, we have prepared for for a long time. I told you uh, in the, uh, the inception of this um, program that there's a likelihood that as we conclude, um, things might get a little more tense. And so um, we have conducted risk assessment in some of these areas. We know that these areas that have been mentioned are areas where we may have some difficulties. And uh, I dare say we are prepared for them. I hope that it doesn't uh, deteriorate to the point where um, we really do have to start making too many arrests. I've already gotten a report that about 10 persons were arrested in the Eleme area um, regarding some uh, practice or the other, the details of which I don't actually have, but they have been, uh, they have made some arrests. You know, this is in addition to the arrest of the person who was conveying in his vehicle um, documents which were considered to be fake. So yes, um, the tensions are building up. We understand, and I, the reports I can confirm, that in Gokana too there has not been any uh, election so far on the basis that they believe the, the uh, materials to be fake. But we'll just have to watch and see how far it goes. Uh, there are your questions. Uh, Kingsley is also online. Kingsley. Kingsley is also online from uh, River State. Kingsley? Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you? What's this situation report from where you are actually monitoring? Okay, from where I am now, uh, from the Kwe local government area, uh, election actually started about uh, 10 30 p.m. That is around uh, 11 at the evening. But uh, there is relatively no voter turnout. When you look at the statistics they gave us at the uh, LLA, they have about uh, 600 it one registered voters. About the time of uh, uh, the report there, uh, only about 30% came out that have accredited and voted. We left there and we drove down to Ishobo. Uh, the voters said the voting started around 12.09 p.m. That is uh, nine minutes after 12. And uh, it's also the same uh, issue, so uh, voters turn out. Uh, about, uh, they had uh, 514 registered uh, voters, 416 collected their PVC. About 12.09 p.m., it's only about 11 persons that have voted at that polling unit. That is uh, World uh, 2 Unit 11. And we left there also, and we came back now to Portacon City Council. The voting is also going on, but uh, the same incident, the same situation at Ward 15, Unit 6, Unit 7, Unit 8, particularly Unit uh, 6, they had uh, 711 registered voters. At 1.28 p.m., it's only about 9 persons that have uh, voted so far. They say they started around 12.30 p.m. The whole uh, uh, incident is that uh, the voting comment actually very late, and uh, we are recording very low turnout so far. Uh, thank you so much, Kingsley. Thank you. Uh, GD, what would you want to say to all these issues that we are actually saying is developing in River State, most especially this issue of res uh, results sheets and prepared written results that is being alleged? Well, um, it is again very unfortunate that the blame still goes back to the political elite uh, who are doing everything humanly possible to undermine not only the electoral process but also outwit each other. What you see on display is a competitive attempt to rig and survive the process. Uh, because again, let's understand the underlying interest and power play that, that is at work here. Uh, 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 APC winning particularly the majority seats in the uh, uh, River State House of Assembly will be a serious threat to the government of uh, Chief Inyeson Wiki, who, as we know, impeachment is done with uh, indominidu uh, uh, level of uh, preparation. Uh, 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 no, what, what do you really mean by indominidu uh, uh, level well, you of know, preparation? You know how it is. You, know, uh, like, you, up, uh, you know how it happened in, uh, in Adamawa, which, where the court has now reversed that the process was not followed. 
In many instances of impeachment in Nigeria, the court, when they intervene, had almost always reversed the process. It happened with the deputy governor of Enugu. The process will never be fair. When, when people, when the, the state assembly is bought over or is prepared to remove the chief executive, it will take only God to save that chief executive. And that's why they always yeah, they uh, want but, but, but it is, it, Because they always abuse the process. But one thing I also need to understand, I, I, I really do not know where this phenomenon of fake resources is coming from. Like the director of publicity, VEP, in INEC has said, as at the time the materials were taking delivery on, on Wednesday, party agents were there. As at the time they moved it to the local government level on Thursday, they were there. As at the time it moved from local government to what or what is now called uh, registration area center, they were there. So at one point in time, I'm not saying there are no attempts, because as, as we have seen, we have seen some pictures of even fake uh, army uniforms, uh, you know, some of the people arrested were seen donning fake army uniform or camouflage and some other thing. So it, is, it still boils down to the political elite who are trying to undermine the process and disenfranchising their own people who will have been allowed to make a free choice of who leads them, either at the state or federal level. It's so unfortunate, and this trend should not and sh cannot be allowed to sustain because it continues to discredit the electoral process. It pains me because it's the taxpayers' money that INEC is mm, using to conduct this, this re uh, uh, elections. Look at it now, Andoni, Gokana. Elections are said not to be holding in those places. And one thing I need to warn us of, particularly some of our social media giants who are fond of posting sensational information that are unfounded. This is not the day to go tweeting and posting on Facebook information that are not come because it has a way of exacerbating the already mm. heightened situation. In fact, I must tell you, possibly you already know, that in Uganda, the, the government of President you say, uh, you're, you're wearing Museveni had to shut down the social media for two days. Because of this issue of posting unfounded information on the, on the social network. I, I'm not saying that that should happen in Nigeria, but we should not push government to a situation where our rights, our civil and human rights, will be curtailed because of the harmful uh, uh, misbehavior of very few people who are just using the IT to, to undermine the process in Kahoot with the political class. Because long story short, uh, many of these political parties and their contestants have, have invested heavily in social media. So much so that they get people sometimes to post misinformation on the, on the internet, believing that it will influence decision one way or the other. And that is not good for the process because it puts INEC in a tight corner. And INEC at this point is distracted, reacting and reacting to misinformation that are, are being peddled as the authentic information. So for, for me, the, the, buck, the buck still passed back to the, to the political class that they need to work in the larger you know, national interest. They should, I mean, we have seen people losing elections. And even Dakuku Peterson, who was the governorship candidate, today is the DJ of Nemasa. He has been compensated. Those who lose their family members, for his sake and for the sake of APC, how many have been compensated? Where are the children of the elites that are, that are orchestrating this violence? Their own children are in safe haven, abroad or in some other parts of the world or in the country where they cannot be reached by the hands of the perpetrators of violence. So they should shine their eyes, as we say in local parlance, that if you get yourself involved or immersed or induced to commit electoral violence, and you are caught, you, you roast in, in the furnace that you have yourself created. But the, 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 the way forward is the system, the political, uh, the, the security system, not to fight shy of prosecuting the masterminds and the ROS. Because all these people, they give 5,000 naira to go and disrupt the process or hold this process to ransom. They are not really the ones that have planned all of these things out. They are mobilized. 
and whoever mobilized them, even if it's one or two people, that we look at what is happening in Israel. We have had a situation where the prime minister is currently serving jail. For what? For breaching campaign finance rules when he was mayor in, in Jerusalem. Will we ever have such situations here that some people were engaged in vote buying or perpetration of electoral violence and they will serve jail terms, even as highly uh, placed persons as they may? In Nigeria, we worship VIPs. When you are a big man, you can break traffic rules. When you are a big man, you can kill and nothing will happen. When you are a big man, you can perpetrate a lot of violence and you still get, you know, the state to sponsor what is called in legal parlance, not only prosecute. Because along the line, when they are arrested, investigations done, and they are charged to court, the government in power, if it belongs to their class or their party, will get the attorney general of the state, or if it were at the, at the federal level, attorney general of the federation, to go and find knowledge that the state is no longer interested in pursuing that case. And that's why some of us in the civil society have said that the power of knowledge prosecute should not apply to electoral offense, not in the least, because that's how they get away with blue murder, disrupting the electoral process, and because they say, oh, don't worry, after our inauguration, we see to it. What does that mean? They get the state to sponsor the knowledge prosecute, and they get them off the hook, and those who form victim of their perpetration of violence go lamenting uh, the, their own loss. I, I, I read about the, the chairman of uh, and, um, this uh, Omaga um, 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 local government, a uh, community of four, where they killed the former chairman, killed his wife, killed his, three of his children, killed his driver and his friend, beheaded the man, I'm talking of in the pre 2015 elections. And it's similar thing that happened in, uh, uh, in, in the, the lead up to this one, where the chairman of uh, APC War Chairman was beheaded with his wife and 18 year old boy. They also, also murdered. Now, the people who have gone have gone. Who bears the brunt, the orphans that they have left behind? Will the party take responsibility for them? Will the society rally around? and make sure that their education of the leftover children are not truncated. That is why people lose their minds when they act as a mob, you know, trying to disrupt the process that is supposed to help them to give them the franchise to elect whoever is going to govern them. And that is why the ultimate aim of election is good governance. If you are able to elect the right leader, the society entirely will benefit because that good rules, water, health centers, you know, that you want so much can only be provided under a democracy by the elected representatives. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, an update from uh, Port Harcourt now. Emmanuel Line is with us. Emmanuel, how are you? Yeah, what's the situation reports from Independent National Electoral Commission in mm. Island office in Port Harcourt. The major activity here this today has been the confirmation of collation and returning officers. And the, the list of the sign came out this morning at about 5 a.m. this morning. And uh, a few minutes ago, some of the officers were being issued their letters to go back to their various uh, local government areas to commence work. I think that has been the situation as a few minutes, even some of the officers are still here, they've not been uh, lifted to their various uh, centers. What, uh, what is the reason being adduced for that? Sorry? What is the reason being adduced for that? Why is it that they have not been taken to their respective place of assignment? Uh, I understand that the, the letters were being signed. The letters were being signed this morning. And so they have been giving them patch by patch, local government by local government. And uh, there are some complaints that uh, some who, were, who attended the training, where well, their names were, were not out, their names didn't come out. And uh, some others said they, their names were exchanged for others. Those are the complaints we got from some of the officers there today. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. We're grateful. Uh, that has been Emmanuel Lene reporting from Independent National Electoral Commission's office. Two questions for mm -hmm. 
Director of Voter Education and Publicity, and it's still boiled down to some of the issues that we have discussed so far. I want to know, and let Nigerians really know, do we really have to show result sheets at polling ward or unit where election is taking place? That's one. Do you have an update from Independent National Electoral Commission on situation so far? Let me take the first question first. Um, there's no requirement either in our laws or in our guidelines or in the manual that result sheets must first be shown to uh, voters at the polling unit. This is because if you look at the architecture for distribution of materials, at every stage, as I stated earlier on, the political parties, their agents, uh, observers, the media, as long as they are accredited, are allowed to observe the process of the movements right from the uh, central bank votes of the sensitive materials onto the state's office of uh, INEC, and from, in, from there to the local government uh, office of the commission, and from there to the camps and to the wards and to the units. So at every stage, you are allowed to see the materials. They record the serial numbers of the materials being distributed at every stage as it cascades down to the polling unit. So the, the opportunity for the agents to see those are there. And that's the essence of why we, we see agents. It's at the discretion of the, of the, of the, polling, uh, uh, the polling officials to show or not to show things. But the commencement of the election, why do you need to see the result sheets? Um, if they choose to, all well and good. Now, the issues I've had from several awards in uh, some local governments, like in Thai, in Gokana, in Kana, uh, is the issue of, look, um, we, this, we've seen the results sheets, but we think these results sheets are, are fake. That took us a couple of hours to sort out. And we've even had to issue a statement onto our social media platforms and the records had to explain to people, look, 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 look. as long as they endorse, in some cases they insisted that the electoral officer or some higher up in their official should endorse the results sheets, which they even complied with just to make peace reign and make the process uh, go ahead. So that is more than uh, sufficient. In uh, most of the areas that I've had uh, uh, information from, in fact, just about every area, uh, in some very really late, but uh, accreditation and voting is ongoing in most of these, in all these areas that uh, they are, except in the pockets, one or two places where they have the violence. I don't have all the particulars of that, so I can't share that with you yet until I get full facts from those on the ground. But if, if we are to summarily look at election in River State as an ECO official, yes. how would you appraise it? I don't want to run the risk of appraising something that is in process. So far, so something good. Something that hasn't, hasn't uh, uh, so far, generally speaking, so far, so good. The essence is that every voter who turns out to vote will be given an opportunity to vote. We'll, we'll vote unhindered, and I hope that uh, people will not be too threatened, either by the presence of security people or armed non-state actors marooding, parading the, 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 the environment. But we, we, we want to conduct an election in a secure manner. And everybody who has a right to vote, whose name appears in the register, should be allowed to vote and will be allowed to vote as long as you come within the specified time or the time as extended, depending on the circumstances of the case where extensions will be necessary. We are gradually rounding off the program. But DIG operations, so far so good. Security on this election and what you have observed, what would you say is your assessment and what is your message as the election will continue to go on? When we began, I did mention that I went to River State on Monday and addressed, I think it was on Wednesday, the stakeholders. And I didn't mean any words when I addressed them. Um, this was because we felt tensions had built up quite, um, you know, there was quite a lot of tension in the, in, in, in the state and there was uh, quite a bit of violence. And may I add here, Jide, that um, the case of the beheading of the gentleman in uh, Omok, I think it was, yeah. and one or two other incidents of violence in River State pre the election period, we have uh, made arrests in those cases. Okay. Um, the election itself is, um, uh, well, I won't say it's hindering the investigation, but it has you know, distracted a little bit. Uh, so we're going to go back to those cases and definitely we're going to pick up more people uh, with respect to that and prosecutions will commence. Back to your question, however, I think um, it's a lot better than a lot of us anticipated. Um, I, for one, expected that there will be and there have been some pockets of violence. Uh, but in most cases, most of the people who have been perpetuating this have actually been arrested. As I said earlier, before, uh, earlier that um, around 10 or 11 people have been picked up from uh, text messages I've been receiving. And again, it seems that the violence is 
been localized to certain areas in the state, you know, Andoni, Gokana, those areas. And so I think I'll give pass, a pass mark at this point in time. But my main concern is after the results have been announced, what will happen? Kunle Fagwemi, your, your round off on this uh, statement, let me say on this reverse rerun, because <laughs> we are gradually... Whereas the main concern will be by the time results start emerging, I still want to plead with political actors and the citizens of River State to conduct themselves in the most civil manner, mindful of the fact that we have a country to run. River State is very key and central to the existence of the Nigerian state and that all political actors, particularly the major dramatic personnel of River State's political system, should rise above partisan politics to begin to diffuse tension ahead of the release of results. Thirteen different groups are monitoring this election. Your group is one of them. Let me put it this way. You are also equally a member of the civil society organization. What's your round of take on what has happened so far? And what really is your message to all the stakeholders involved in this election as it continues? Well, um, I, I, I join in making an appeal. Mm -hmm. uh, incidentally, no matter the level of um, observation you do, uh, I'm not on the field, but I know a couple of um, civil society organizations who have made deployments to the field. But you see, observers just observe and write report. It's only a neck that has power to monitor. And monitoring is different from observation because a monitor can in get involved in the process to right the wrongs or make uh, a, to help improve the process. But an observer just watches at a distance, writes his or her report, and file it as necessary. The good thing is that the courts are now respecting observers' report as part of exhibits for judicial <coughs> process. Uh, the, the, the point has to be made that uh, on, on the level of appeal I want to make, politicians in River State should not see this as a do or die. When people lose election, it's like he who fights and run away, leaves to fight another day. In your State, the incumbent governor lost in 2007. He lost as a governorship candidate in 2007 under AMPP. But today, he's on his second term as governor, which is unprecedented in the political history of your state. In several other states, even in, in Ogun State, uh, Governor Amosun lost in 2007 under AMPP. Today, he's also serving his second term. So people should not see that when they lose election, all is over for them. Even if you lose and you, you can't win an election, you get compensated. There is a compensatory, compensatory system that makes sure that you don't totally lose that. You may lose elective office, but you gain appoint, uh, appointment, uh, and it may even pay you better than if you had been uh, an elected representative. Last take from my neck. Well, so far, so good. Um, we hope and pray that uh, relative peace, which pervades River State, continues and pockets of violence will be eliminated and will not go on because it's, we still have somewhere to go. Um, we've not closed the polls. The counting has, sorting and counting still has to be done. Declaration result has to be done. Collision has to be done. And all these are delicate stages. We cannot afford to relax now to say, look, all is well or generally it's so good. But so it's to appeal for the patience of the good people of River State. They've been very, very good. Admittedly, there have been few miscreants who are trying to disrupt the process. And as I has been three senatorial elections, 12 federal constituency elections, 22 also constituencies in the state assembly with 2,535,535 registered voters partaking in an election that is holding in 319 wards of 5,114 units. And we have about 379 coalition officers and 37 returning officers. The returning officers will now be expected to do what is expected, and that is to bring back results that were actually done at the polling units. I want to thank Ulu Ole Osazi Uze, the Director of Voter Education and Publicity of Independent National Electoral Commission, for always coming here and for always partaking in this program. Thank we are grateful. Thank you. Equally to the Representative of Inspector General of Police, Sir Toy Wakama, the DIG Operations. Thank we are you. glad you're here. And we also, let me say that... Uh, 
the humorous nature you added into the program is highly appreciated. <laughs> Thank you. I want to also say Gideo Joe, Executive Director of Jet Development Consult. Thank you very much, particularly for what happened today. You know better, as I said. <laughs> I don't want <laughs> to go into that, but we are glad you are here. Thank you. And we are grateful much. that you I'm always really oblige us. Kule Fagbemi, Executive Director, Center for Peace Building and Social Economic Resource Development. I want to say thank you to, to thank you. you very much. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we are glad. I can't stretch my hands to you, but I, I will do that <laughs> later. I know my viewers are watching. Okay, what is he going to do about Jidojo? Who is a little bit far? This is the Nigerian Television Authority Network Service, the largest television network in the entire African continent. And that is why you can't beat the rich. We'll always be there to present to you, to give to you analysis, appraisers, reports, development in anywhere it is happening in this country and even outside. And that is why we have seen what has happened today. The National Assembly and State rerun elections in River State has been brought to you. But do not worry, we'll keep you posted with developments as it unfolds in River State. But for now, my name is Femi Johnson, and I want to say thank you too for staying tuned.